Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amanda Muse and today's sit down chatty video is gonna be all about some tips for doing activities solo as a woman. Is it specific to gender? No, but I am a woman so I speak from my experience. So let's get on with the video. Whenever I do share my walks on Instagram and I talk to you guys in my stories, you will notice a few things. The first thing is that I don't share exactly where I am when I'm there. As a content creator, naturally I'm sharing my life. So there are certain things that I will share like post event. Hey, I went hiking at this location and I'll share links or I'll tag the location I'm at, but it's not something I do in the moment. Big Apple fan, I've used Apple phones for years. I also have my Apple watch. So I'm gonna share a few of the hacks that I use with my devices. But the first thing I do is I share my location, specifically with my husband. My kids also know exactly where my location is at all times. You can also share your location for an hour and then you can stop sharing locations. So keep that in mind. If I'm taking a new route, I will let people know. Now, do I take the same route all the time? No, that's another little safety hack. Whenever I go out for walks, I take a different path, even if it's just around my neighborhood. I just think it's smart to not have such a regimented routine that somebody could say, oh, at this time of day, that lady is going to be walking. And if somebody's paying attention, I mean, we don't wanna live in fear here, but let's just be honest, bad things happen. Maybe it seems like more bad things happen because of the amount, sheer volume of true crime that I listen to, but it is a reality. And so I like to switch up my routine. But sharing your plans is a really good hack to ensure that somebody is at least knowing where you are especially if you're doing something new or heading to a new place. Hey, I'm gonna be heading to this location. I'm planning to be home around 5 p.m. Like if you don't hear from me by this time, please check in. The second one, I mean, take it with a grain of salt because I am but a mere mortal YouTuber who lives in Canada who is not the police and not the law, right? So this one, I think the caveat is verify what is legal in your country. So on walks and on hikes, bear spray, pepper spray, all that stuff is totally illegal, but dog spray is not. So at the time of filming, June 2024, you can definitely have dog spray on you. But Amanda, why would you be carrying dog spray? Totally afraid of dogs. Dogs, man versus bear, you feel me? Yeah, I have that in my pocket. You could also carry a Fox 40 whistle, super loud whistle. Probably gonna hurt your ears when you blow it. Probably gonna hurt someone else's ears if you blow it and probably gonna send off some sort of alarm, right? Like if something is wrong, if you're walking in the forest and something were to happen to you, you got this little device with you. Aside from the legal issues that you could have with carrying a device is that, you know, is it gonna cause harm to you? Is there that potential that you could be hurt with the item that you're carrying? Something to consider. I truly wish that I was being a little bit extreme with these thoughts, but the fact is, is so many women will DM me and say that they do not walk alone, that they won't walk after the sun goes down, even in their communities. Like I'm not talking like big cities, you know, parts of the world that would be dangerous to walk after dark. I'm just talking like communities regular old communities, people are afraid to walk by themselves. So the fear exists, whether it's warranted or not, it is there. And so I feel like these little steps that we can do to prepare ourselves to help feel like you have more control of the situation will also just get you doing the activities you like to do. And that sometimes we can just do things by ourselves. I talked about sharing the location feature on your Apple device. The other thing to consider is if you are an Apple user, your Apple Watch and your Apple phone has actual built-in elements that can help you should you go off grid, should you encounter an emergency, and should you need some help. I absolutely adore going on hikes, going on walks, but sometimes I get a little bit nervous being by myself in wooded areas. And some of the new features on my iPhone and my Apple Watch actually make me feel really safe. Like if something was to happen and I'm off grid, Boom, satellite baby. I actually took a trip recently and I learned all about how to use the satellite feature within the iPhone 14 and iPhone 15 series. It is incredible. So to bring it back for a second, when this first launched, I actually tested out how to use this satellite feature within your phones in the city. I was downtown Toronto. There's a way to actually test it on your phone to see like an example. What would it look like if I didn't have service and I hit, you know, one of the, the satellites that was close by? How would I send a text message to receive emergency help? That type of thing. But then we took it up a level and we actually went off grid and practiced it in real time. What would it look like 
you're off grid, you're hiking, you fall down, you encounter an emergency situation and you need help and you have no service. Your phone then takes you through certain steps to actually use a satellite to then connect with the local emergency services. It is so cool and it all works through text message. So this isn't like a satellite phone. You're not able to call your loved ones and tell them what's going on. However, when you actually set up your phone and you set up your medical ID and you have your emergency contacts, as you're connected, connecting through satellite to these emergency services, your contacts are going to get the up-to-date text message exchange so that they know what's going on with you. They have your location and they're able to see, okay, so Amanda fell down. Amanda got hurt in the forest. She has connected with emergency services. They are on their way to locate her and here's her location. Well, like your emergency contacts are not able to connect back with the emergency services or even touch base with you, but they at least see where you are and see what's going on, whether it's on their phone or on their Apple watch. So, so your Apple watch would have to have its own separate line, which you would pay separate for, or your iPhone can be connected to uh, emergency services. It's literally saved people's lives. Like a, a guy went hiking in BC, brought literally nothing with him and had his Apple watch on and somehow got lost on the trail, ended up off grid unintentionally. It just so happened that he fell off grid and realized, oh my God, I need help. How am I going to get home? Used his Apple watch and was able to connect with emergency services and they rescued him. Like, this is amazing. This is changing the game. I'm gonna share some links below so you can get a little bit more information because it's hard to just like summarize it all in a short video. But I will say that this also works internationally like Australia, Austria, Belgium, France, Germany, Ireland, Italy, Luxembourg, the Netherlands, New Zealand, Portugal, Spain, Switzerland, the UK and the US. There might be a few other locations, but basically as long as you can connect through satellite, to the emergency services in that region, you will be able to get some help. And for me, what that does is it just offers me peace of mind. That if something were to happen to me, that I do have something, some sort of safety net to help me out of that situation. So we're out there, we're doing our adventures, we're equipped, we've got our devices. The other thing is like literally think about exposure. Uh, I remember this tragic story years ago where this family went for a hike in the States and it was just really hot. I think it was a family with either one or two kids and they literally died of exposure from the heat. That can happen. So you want to have as much water as you can carry, hats, clothing to help prevent, you know, if it's sun or if it's wind or whatever it is. But like just being prepared if you're doing something that's a little bit more involved or a full day hiking thing. Maybe it's bug spray. Maybe it's sunblock. I mean, it sounds kind of silly, but I was recently on this big hike in this beautiful forested area and several people didn't bring water, which kind of blew my mind. I was like, what do you mean you didn't bring water? <laughs> like, what if you get overheated? You know, I don't know, maybe that's my age showing or just the fact that I'm a mom and I'm always prepared, but like bare bones it, baby. Bring the water bottle. I mean, get yourself a little cute thermos. There's about a million cute water bottles out there. Go get one, bring it, stay hydrated, just be ready. And if we're going back to point number two, some of these water bottles are pretty sturdy and pack a punch. So if you gotta whip this at someone, bang, I mean, two for one, right? The other thing I personally love when I am by myself is yes, I wanna take in all my scenery, I wanna enjoy it, but also I'm really big on movement meditation. So I love to listen, I use my AirPods, I listen to podcasts, I listen to audio books. It's like this two for one. I just love checking things off the list. You mean I could walk and read? At the same time, amazing. I love to pair some of my activities together. It just makes it super fun. I love listening to podcasts, although I will say, I, I try not to listen to scary ones when I'm walking alone because I'm like not trying to freak myself out here, you know? But at the end of the day, some of the messaging I always try to share, whether it's online, whether it's here, is don't stop the thing. Don't prevent yourself from fun and new experiences out of fear. For me, it's all about just being prepared for some of the unknowns. Can you prepare for everything? No, but you can prepare for a lot of it. You can prepare for your safety as much as possible, your physical person, your hydration, you know, certain elements like tech that can help you make sure all your devices are nicely charged. I'm a big fan of Anchor. This is a really cool battery pack you can carry with you so that your phone never runs out of battery. How fun is that, right? Magnet charge because of the MagSafe on the back. Anyway, a little bit of prep, 
will help minimize some of your fear because you're taking back that control. You're feeling like you're in charge of the situation and will allow you to get out and enjoy. Because let me tell you, as a person who does have like the touch of the anxiety, just a touch, um, and who can be a little fearful before I've done something before. Like if I haven't done something, I am always a little bit nervous, but I live for new experiences. The way it just fills my cup and just lights up my soul when I experience something new, whether it's being in the middle of this incredible forest in BC, seeing porpoises jump around, being on cool boats, like blew my mind how fun it was and also how prepared we can be to take some of that fear away. So do you have any plans this summer that's going to take you off grid, that's going to take you into new experiences? Let me know. Thank you so much for being here. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up, like this video, leave some comments if you can, and I will catch you next week with a brand new video. Bye guys.